Hey, how's it going? You know, I don't really hide the fact that I'm a bit of an addict when it comes to buying all sorts of new gadgets and gizmos in the miniature hobby. I'm always looking for something that will give me the next leg up to become a better painter or more efficient hobbyist. And about a year has passed since I've really brought in new products to the fold and it's part of my regular hobbying routine. And enough time has passed that I feel like I need to share another list of eight amazing things that I use on a regular basis that miniature companies don't really want us to know about for how good they are and oftentimes how cheap they are. This video is not about putzing around and talking about feel good stories and all sorts of amazing things in the miniature hobby. Oh no, this video is about stuff. So let's get right into the stuff. The first thing I wanna show you comes in this white unassuming box. Inside this box is what looks to be a pen. Now I ordered this on Kickstarter about a year ago and I've been using it basically nonstop ever since. This thing is called the wow stick. It's an electric pen drill. Now it's common to use a hobby vise if we need to drill holes in our models to either pin them together, pin them to the base, or maybe even drill out the barrels of our guns. But why this thing does it so well is because it's a high torque, low speed drill with a wide variety of bits. Each of those bits seems ideal for the hobby size that we use. It's especially nice that a number of the drill bit sizes are the exact same size as paper clips, meaning that we can use them to pin our models easily and cheaply or attach our heads to a piece of cork so we can paint the head separately. The fact that this thing is high speed and low torque means that it feels like it's designed specifically for our use. It can get through metal, it can get through resin, it can get through plastic with ease without going so fast that we lose control over the precise holes we're trying to drill. It also recharges with just a USB-C to USB-A instead of using batteries, so I just plug it into my computer when I need to recharge it. Like I said, I backed this thing on Kickstarter, but I did see that they now sell it on Amazon. So I've got a link down in the video description below, and I'll have links to everything else I'm gonna talk about today, should you wanna support the channel and pick up anything you see here today. All right, next one. This thing just looks like a sponge, but in fact, it's what's called a sanding block. Specifically, it's got angled edges on there. These things are perfect when I am assembling and cleaning up larger kits and terrain. Terrain kits are notorious for having big connection points to the sprue, as well as long mold lines that run all the way across something. I like to use a 600 grit sanding block for all of my big kits and my terrain kits because it goes so much faster than trying to do it with a hobby knife or even a little file. I particularly like the fact that these have this nice hard angle, which means that I can actually get into really tight corners and really tight spots with my sanding block and I don't have to go back and forth to different tools. This is something that's just great to have one in your drawer because when you need it, it will save you so much thinking time. All right, I wanna talk about attaching our models to our painting handles. Now I have something that is near and dear to my heart that I talked about in one of my first videos and that is the 3M double-sided foam tape. This still is, in my opinion, the best thing to use to attach our models to painting handles. But this stuff can be a little bit difficult to find and it is a consumable, even though the tape is reusable for a couple of minis before it loses its stickiness. I did wanna look for something that was a little bit more environmentally friendly and does what I really was always hoping that blue tack was designed to do. I've always hated blue tack. I think it's ridiculous. It never works how I want it to work. Then I came across something known as museum wax. This stuff is used in museums to keep the fancy artifacts from moving around and being on display just how they like it. This stuff will hold your model super firm. Even if it's bigger, heavy metal model, this stuff is not gonna go anywhere. That's what it's designed to do. Now, because this stuff is wax and it keeps such a strong hold, when you remove it from your painting handle, the bottom of the base might be a little bit tacky or sticky. Now, for most of the time, that stuff's never gonna touch anything, so I really don't care about it, but it's a pretty easy thing to clean up with just a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel, wipe it across the bottom of the base, and that thing is clean and you're ready to move on. This stuff is not very expensive. It comes in a nice big jar. So even if you've got a massive project going on or you've got a bunch of different painting handles where different models are always attached to at different times, you're gonna be able to handle all of those big projects and more with just one jar of this stuff. I had all eight of these items pre-prepared and ready to go for today's video, but while I was pulling out some of the products, 
I went through my boxes and I realized that I had never really talked about the boxes that I use all around the studio and they are called really useful boxes. These things are really, there's a number of reasons why I love these things. First of all, they're really high quality and have these nice crisp handles that keep them all tight and secure. They're also perfectly flat on both the bottom and top. There's no curving like a lot of tubs have. So a ton of models can fit magnetized in the bottom of each of these boxes. They also are made to be perfectly stackable. They have grooves on the lid so they connect really, really well. So yeah, that's a bonus one. Take it or leave it, it's, it's a plastic tub. All right, next one is something that I learned about a couple of years ago from Squidmar himself, and that is something known as coconut fibers. Now, coconut fibers are often used for bedding for reptiles, and it's pretty cheap to buy a brick or a bag of this stuff. I basically use this stuff for any kind of natural ground cover for my models. It's great to cover the whole model base with, or just a part of it, because it has this nice, fine, two-scale, irregular texture. It even has what looks like little sticks or twigs or roots that are in here as well. Again, those are to scale. And if I don't like them, it's easy to pick them out. This stuff just looks so much nicer and so natural on the bases of your models. It's not uniform like all the sand or little gravel that you can buy. I just found it's a great all-purpose starting point for any natural basing that I do. I've kind of stopped using everything else. I basically start with this stuff and then figure out what other individual things I wanna use like rocks or whatever on the base and go from there. And what I found is a great addition to the coconut fibers to make an area look even more natural is a little bit of tea leaves. Here is peppermint tea. Here I've got black tea. I like to put some of this stuff in a little container and sprinkle it after I've put down the coconut fibers and it looks like natural detritus in leaves and it really brings a little bit more texture and it's really simple and again, super cheap. Now with both of these, I do make sure that I hit them with another layer of either thin down PVA glue or super glue thin to make sure everything's stuck in there firmly and nothing's gonna flake off. Today's video is brought to us by Rivenstone, the upcoming miniature skirmish game coming live to Kickstarter on April 26th. I got to play a demo of Rivenstone a few weeks back at Adepticon and I had a blast. The game brings in a couple of new, very interesting elements to miniature skirmish combat that keeps the action flowing and it brings a level of strategy that gets me wanting to come back for more. Rivenstone is set in a fantasy world where magic is a physical resource which grows in great crystalline deposits called Rivenstones. Players can collect, paint, and play their personal warband of miniatures as they battle each other to control the crystal. The game is easy to learn, though it features plenty of tactical depth to explore and utilize on the table. A typical warband has between eight and 14 models, so it's pretty easy to get your head around and get going right away. Plus, each of the different factions has their own starter box with everything you need in it to start right away. Make sure you click on the link to rivenstonegame.com down in the video description so you can learn even more about the game and get signed up for their reminder list for when the Kickstarter goes live. A big thank you to Broken Anvil Miniatures for making this awesome game and supporting the channel. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna talk about glue and it may not be a very exciting topic because if you sniffed one glue, you've sniffed them all. But I found that there's a particular problem when I'm trying to glue metal models together. They just seem to always break off. But I've been hearing that the solution to all your super glue woes, especially when it comes to metal models, lies in something known as super glue gel by Gorilla Glue. And I can confirm from building quite a few confrontation models and infinity models and other metal models and resin models with this super glue, this stuff really is incredibly strong. And once it's adhered, the stuff is not going anywhere. This stuff is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get out because it's quite thick in the gel consistency means that it doesn't want to flow very easily. But as long as you smack the bottle a couple times on the table before you take the top off, I found that that gets the glue down where you need it and it's pretty easy to work with. Now, if you're anything like me, you're not a super glue engineer, so sometimes you have some mistakes when it comes to your gluing and the glue squeezes out in places where you don't want it to be and you're kind of freaking out, what the heck do I do in that moment? Luckily, I found the perfect tool for those situations. They're called 
eyeliner micro applicators. And like so many really good products for the miniature hobby, these are based on the makeup industry. These little sticks have a little tip that's almost like furry and spongy and it absorbs that little bit of super glue that got where you didn't want it to go. So I usually have a couple of these sitting out at my table as I'm assembling models. And if I make a mistake, I grab one, it sucks it up, it cleans out that line, and it also does a really good job of hiding any seams because I just wipe that super glue over the seam and bam, you're set. I've often found that using some cool little tricks can be the difference between a model that looks okay and a model that really catches the eye, especially on the tabletop. And one product I keep going back to time and time again because of how versatile and how cool it makes my models look is Uhu glue. Now modelers and hobbyists have been using Uhu glue for a long, long time to create some really cool things. And I particularly love it for making slime, for making blood, for making ooze. It strings out and then it dries hard. So it looks wet and glossy and nasty. And I just find that it's so quick, it's so simple, and I just love using it whenever I can, especially on my tabletop models. If you don't have a bottle of Uhu glue in your hobby kit, I think you need to add it because I don't know of any hobby product that pulls off what this stuff pulls off as easily and as quickly as it does. I didn't really intend to put any paint in today's video, but I did want to end on something that I really think you all need to know about because of how awesome it is and how often I use it in my painting. And that is Golden High Flow Acrylics Titan Buff. This artist's paint is an almost exact color match to Citadel's Wraithbone, which is the paint they want us to paint over top of when we use contrast paint. And I love the Wraithbone color. It's a nice warm off white. And it's a great color to even use to build up highlights with. But this stuff is so much cheaper and it's airbrush ready, meaning I just can spray it directly out of my airbrush without thinning and it creates a nice smooth coat. And this stuff not only is a great starting point for contrast and just a great highlight color to own in general, I've actually used this stuff instead of white ink for all of my Zenithal primes in the last year or so, and I don't see myself going back. All right, those are the eight products plus a couple of free ones that have found their way into my regular hobbying routine in the last year or so. I went about making this list saying, is this something that if I didn't own it today, would I immediately go back and buy it because I need to have one? So each of these things I feel are super valuable to me. That doesn't mean that I expect you to buy all eight, but if any of them catches your attention, I've spent enough time with each of them that I really feel it's a worthwhile investment. And speaking of investing, if you wanted to invest in these videos, meaning help me make more of them, the way to do that is to check out the Patreon link in the video description below. By becoming a member of the Ninja on Patreon, you get some fun rewards like access to my discord server where we can hang out and talk about anything miniature painting as well as access to my weekly video vlog so check that out i really appreciate each and every one of the patrons for supporting me and making this a reality i'm going to see you back here real soon for a spicy mini painting video that i've been drooling over making for quite a while so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that and between now and then make sure you find some time to slay the gray